lovely folks that couldn't hear me talking there a little bit better, so I uh, apologize for that. And uh, I think we're ready to all. Uh, Chris raised a really good conversation on the, the, the Inter Agency Visit Rare Committee five year plan for 2000, well, the next five year plan. Uh, but I want to preface it with the folks at the table recall we had talked about making sure that the subcommittee five year plans are announced. Uh, up to date with the overall five-year action plan and we are to that point but we still have some ways to go in order to make the two consistent with each other and make sure that they're reflective of each other so kind of keep that in mind as we go along too but with that chris i'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you do you want the microphone so Hopefully, um, we can have a discussion about the five-year plan that will involve all the executive committee members and everybody can get involved in this discussion. The five-year plan was initiated by the IGBC in 1999, the idea that um, the, the executive committee would develop a set of five-year goals and objectives that they wanted to accomplish over the next five years, and each subcommittee would do the same thing and they would develop these goals with the idea of accomplishing tasks that are in the recovery plan and that their activities from year to year would be centered around completion of those tasks. And it's a good way to organize what everybody does and to have a measure of success um, that each time the uh, committee meets and they can compare how they're doing on the various aspects of the five-year plan versus uh, uh, maybe enhancing efforts on some activities and checking off completed on other activities. Well, what's happened is um, over time, these five-year plans have, have morphed into the document you see here. And it's fair to say that it's time for a review of the process of a five-year plan. I think the fundamental issue of using a plan like this to guide the actions of each subcommittee and of the IGBC is a really good business organization plan and allows accountability for all the, um, the subcommittee members. And it's very helpful to new members when they get on the, either the executive committee or the subcommittee that reading the tasks and the five-year plan for a subcommittee if you're a new member really helps you understand what's trying to be accomplished so um, at this point we have uh, a document that you see in front of you that is fairly extensive many of the things in this document are either completed and have not been noted as completed or are not being pursued to any great degree uh, or there's some inconsistency or lack of clarity on whether those things should be done or if they were to be done how it would be done and at the uh, at the june meeting there was a, a june igbc meeting this past year there was a discussion about some of the items in the uh, cabinet acts subcommittee five-year plan and I was asked to contact the Cabinet Act Subcommittee and get those doc or those statements clarified. And I contacted the Cabinet Act Subcommittee, and Mary is here to we'll talk about this. Uh, they went above and beyond and not only addressed the issue that, that I asked them to address on behalf of the ITBC, but they they redid their entire five-year plan and updated it. And I think theirs is the most up-to-date plan that is in this document. So what we would like to have is a review of the five-year plan process in the next hour or so, and a consideration of the five-year plans not only for the executive committee, but for each of the subcommittees, and then a commitment or a response from both the executive committee and each of the subcommittee chairs on what they can do to enhance their five-year plan and when they will come back to the IGBC with the plan. In the future, it would be very valuable to have a five-year plan for each subcommittee so that every time that subcommittee chair came before the IGBC, that the basis of their presentation was the items in their five-year plan. And they went through all of those as the first thing they talked about 
so that everybody on the executive committee can know the progress that's being made by that subcommittee. And at the subcommittee meetings, if they go through all those items with the subcommittee members, then everybody on the subcommittee knows what their charge is and how to do it. And it sets up a standard that every subcommittee would, would adhere to. And every time that subcommittee comes before the IGBC, there would be a statement on how they're doing on each of those, um, those tasks for that subcommittee and updates as necessary. And then the executive committee would have to do the same thing. They would have to go through their five-year plan documents or five-year plan tasks and update um, those tasks as necessary. So it's a way to operate that pulls everybody together, that makes it really clear what everybody's supposed to be doing, how they're doing on progress, and um, if that five-year plan is the basis for every meeting and how things are going, it's a very productive way to do business. So with that as a background, I guess I'll throw it open to this the executive committee members to talk about that and then um, after that we can hear from the subcommittee chairs about their ideas. <laughs> executive committee members, would you like to speak to this? Well, we're doing this microphone because some people on the edge were having a hard time hearing. So, um, I agree with, with the process you just outlined, that, that the work plan ought to be the, the uh, mechanism for evaluating what, what this committee thinks is important for the subcommittee to work on as well as then uh, report out as well. The other thing that, that you didn't mention, I think, is also is equally important is, is the IGBC itself. This, this five-year plan includes the five-year plan for the IGBC commitments. I think we need to also evaluate ourselves and report back, you know, here's what we said are our priorities, are we doing them or not? And, and if you look at our five-year plan, we're, we're not. So, so that would be my recommendation, we first look at ourselves and then we look at the end of the subcommittee. What I'm trying to figure out, Chris, and, and um, I think it's fundamental, is you know it's almost like a five-year running plan because it has uh, been updated several times in that five-year cycle, and there's content in here that suggests that the alignment occur amongst the subcommittee reporting timeframes and this time frame, which I which I fully support. So, what's your what's your vision of how often this plan would be revisited. Is it once every five years, or does it have the annual update? Well, my thought is that it would be annually because if the executive committee and each subcommittee starts their discussion on the basis of what's in the five-year plan, then that could that five-year plan could be checked off or updated on that regular meeting basis because it's a very dynamic document. Five years is a long time. I think it should be done at every meeting, and that keeps everybody on task to make sure that they're addressing the task or update the task as we meet. And, and, and that's exactly what I was going to propose, was that, that there would be agreement around the table that that, that be the, the model with um, one additional qualifier, and that is, uh, do you recommend once every five years a major overhaul at the subcommittee and the exec committee level, or is it essentially a, uh, a running document and it just happens to be called a five-year document? That's that's what I'm trying to figure out the difference between. And, I mean, I, pros and cons, I guess. On the on the pro side, it seems to me that it would be extremely valuable once every five years to really have a good, solid look at performance indicators of various kinds and you know some creative thinking and brainstorming around the next five year cycle. So I think I think that could be good. But at the same time if it's a running document, it's a running document. It doesn't need a five year uh, time. So I just wanted to put that forward. It's not my place to, to recommend one or the other, but I think those are fundamental decisions. 
I think those are those are um, great comments, Tony, and and in looking at this a little more in depth. I'm trying, Tris. All right, that uh, Good points, Tony and, and, and Chris. And in looking at this in more depth, a little bit uh, closer, it is kind of uh, an interesting way that we do this. And doing an overhaul every five years is certainly one way to go about it. But because the changes are so regular, it kind of makes you think, why, why keep it to five years? And should this be something that we update on a yearly basis? However, that's a lot of work to do that. Um, but the, the thing that's most important to me, I think, is that the goals and what we say we're going to do every year are evaluated at every meeting. And that includes the summer meeting. And the, the summer meetings and the winter meeting, we have report outs and updates that are provided by the subcommittee chairs as well as the IGPC so that we are keeping better tabs on what it is we're doing and what we're supposed to be doing and that is reflective of whatever, however many year plan we have in front of us. So that's kind of what my thinking is to make sure that we are really um, doing what we're supposed to, we have great accountability and we have a plan, however many years it is, that guides us towards our, towards our goals. Anybody else want the microphone here? I know there's other thoughts on this because some of us have been talking about it. Okay. I guess I would just say that the other thing that I think would be worthwhile talking about is the, the relationship, the relationship between the subcommittees and their work plans and this committee and, and how that relationship is, is fostered. And so, um, are we giving direction to the subcommittees who then go out and put together a work plan? Or is our only direction goes to a work plan and we'll give it a thumbs up or thumbs down? And then, you know, again, just in the governance structure, if they're a subcommittee of the big committee, then, then we ought to be giving them direction and then, and then feedback. The, the other thing that, that uh, I don't know if this is the appropriate place or the MOU discussion is, is that the question about um, what's the role of the subcommittees or what are current subcommittees upon the listing. So, so in MOU it says this group continues to have oversight um, recovery and after recovery. And the uh, five-year work plans, um, particularly in the specific work plan, it says once once they're delisted, we're done. Um, and we're no longer a subcommittee. So it'd be good to, to get um, clarification, I guess, on what is the role of this committee and subcommittees pre and post be listing. So in the NCDE we tackled that and in the draft conservation plan for the NCDE we have the committee described well not as what the subcommittee prior to the listing it does describe the membership and the interaction that needs to be occurring in tie to so I think we've covered that well. It's just a matter of just knowing what's in that draft conservation and, and I think, Ken, that, that that is the crux of my suggestion with regard to annual update, because as you go through, um, you know, try to keep up with what's happening for under the delisting for Yellowstone and Northern Continental Divide. Is a, is a perfect example of why this thing needs to change on an annual basis. And, and uh, or, or maybe even uh, within a, an annual time frame. That the um, actions and priorities depend on the progress towards that delisting. And it seems to me that, you know, this is a perfect opportunity to say, okay, on an annual basis, uh, what are the priorities to to achieve those uh, progress towards that. So I'll just tax as the improvement pathway for the article. Yeah. Thanks. Um, and I know the executive committee members are still weighing in, but I just I wanted to offer some thoughts because I really appreciate this conversation. In fact, as I was going to provide the report out for the Yellowstone ecosystem, the questions of expectations for subcommittees, 
structure process were very much on, on my mind. So maybe I'll, I'll go on a little bit of a tangent to some of those now. Um, so I, I've been in the Yellowstone ecosystem for eight years and just this fall took on the role of the Yellowstone ecosystem chair. What I found when I looked into that is into our past documentation is there's a charter under IGBC for the subcommittee. Although we couldn't find a charter for yes, we could only find a charter for the committee once the bear was delisted under YGCC. I don't believe that under IGBC there are charters for all the subcommittees. Um, the charter that we have for yes um, is very, I mean it's clear in some points, but it's not clear in many other points. That charter does not speak to the role of a subcommittee chair. It doesn't speak to an annual expectation of a report to IGBC or an annual plan or an annual monitoring plan. None of that is identified in our charter. Um, what's happened for us is that the chair rotates every two years and really that transition happens by a oral tradition as the past chair hands it to the next chair. Um, and then you look at the old notes. So I didn't even realize that there was an expectation of an annual report to IGBC. That didn't happen the past two years um, when Wyoming had that role because there's nothing in writing, there's no legacy that speaks to that interface between subcommittees. So I was really going to pitch that this would be a great time for IGBC to really refresh the expectations of individual subcommittees, perhaps have charters for all the subcommittees that were somehow consistent and linked. Um, in that, speak to the role that subcommittee chairs have within IGBC. Do we report to IGBC? Do we have a role within IGBC? Um, and uh, anyway, I think it would really help to standardize and articulate the expectations. Um, and then there's also a question on that interface between IGBC and the subcommittees. There are some issues that we would work on, and perhaps this would come out in that five-year process, but there are some issues we would work on within a subcommittee that would resonate across all ecosystems. But there are also issues that IGBC could choose to provide stronger leadership and consistency on that would rise above the level of subcommittees, whether that's consistency on how you look at food storage or attractive storage, or anyway, I think there's a whole long list of those. Um, but th those would probably have to be deliberate decisions from IGBC that those rise above the level of subcommittees. So anyway, I guess my plea there is I really like the idea of a five-year uh, process on the Yellowstone Ecosystem Subcommittee. While we can do a very good report out of what we have been working on, uh, it would be much better to actually link that to a broader five-year plan. I think we would have to take the decision that you all make today and then bring that back to the Yellowstone Ecosystem Subcommittee and really kind of refurbish our process and our five-year plan. And I think, Mary, that's, that's what we're getting for to, to, to get to that point. Just you know what, we're talking about a couple different things here and uh, one of them is five-year or action plan or a running kind of action plan. Another thing is the role of IGBC after you and I heard that too. Um, does IGBC or the subcommittee chairs make the decision on what they're doing? It's a, a big issue. And then the, the subcommittee role, that's another issue. So we're talking several different things at this table, but they're all things that over the course of time, several of us have become more aware that it's a problem and things aren't running as smoothly as they, as they perhaps should be. So the purpose of the conversation some of the purpose of the conversation today is what can we do better, how can we make these changes and get everybody on board so that we have a, a little bit better of a process for our IGBC action plans, for the subcommittee action plans, the roles of everybody, the report outs, the expectations. So that's that's kind of what we need to talk about and come kind to of some conclusions through the course of this conversation today. Maybe we can start with um, one of these and focus on one instead of so many at one time. Um, um, Thoughts? Any suggestions? Scott? Just my point gets to what one of those topics is the roles, and I think we did uh, a couple of years ago make a concerted effort to write write up the roles for the different um, you know, executive committee members and advisors and 
can't remember if that was for the committee, the subcommittee chairs, if there was a, an intentional statement of a role for the subcommittee chairs. Um, so we've given that topic a bit of attention in here, but, but maybe it needs to be revisited or include the, the subcommittee chairs to clarify that role. Well, I think that was under Harv's chairmanship that, that he led that. And I don't know, Alan, do you recall where that, the roles, remember we wrote up the roles for the different, like for your position, for the committee members and the advisors? Or did that get disseminated to uh, the folks? Yep, I mean, after the meeting we did, everybody who got that, um, we did have, I mean, I have available, it's filed, so I can pull it out again and resend it. But yes, I mean, everybody got that. We all worked on it together. We broke out the groups and we all defined the roles and we kind of had that facilitator. And so, I mean, the answer was yes, and yes, I have that. And, and let me know if you want it. <laughs> like that. Maybe that's just a start to some of the rules of clarification it's here and, 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 and tear off of that. So would you guys like me to send that out to everybody as soon as this meeting's over? I can send that to get the maybe the ideas going again and we can revisit what we have already done in the past and go from there as a starting point? So is that the roles of each subcommittee chair? No, it was the roles of, wasn't it? It was like my role, the, the advisor's roles, and I thought the committee, executive committee chair. Members. members? Not the subcommittee. It was just an executive committee. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll pull it up and we'll visit the pieces as a start. As a start. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll take a stab at a specific if that's. Yes, please. So, Chris, this is for you. One of the, the um, content components under Appendix A is a description of how problematic uh, progress towards delisting for the Northern Continental Divide is with regard to revision of the recovery plan by 2017. So we're at the bottom of page eight. Okay. And there's, there's content that talks to how problematic it is with regard to progress towards delisting for the Northern Continental Divide. And what I didn't understand, and perhaps you could clarify, is why isn't that problematic for Yellowstone too? Okay, and that's a good question. And the reason, the way that we are doing things and we've done things in Yellowstone, is when we get to the point that we need to update a recovery plan chapter to put it in sync with recovery within that ecosystem. We propose an update to the chapter for that ecosystem, go out to public comment on that, get those updates in place, and they are in line with what is in place for the conservation strategy and the post delisting management on that ecosystem. So for Yellowstone, in 2013, we updated the demographic standards with new demographic standards based on new information from the study team. We put that out for public comment. We still haven't finalized it yet, but that those changes are to put the demographic standards in the recovery plan chapter in line with what's in the conservation strategy and thus post delisting management. If we change the recovery plan before we get to that point, then we would have to make sure in some ecosystems perhaps we haven't gotten to the point of, of solidifying demographic standards. If we're going to change demographic standards, we have to make sure that they're in line with what we want to see in a post listing horizon. In the NCDE, for example, we have developed a uh, demographic standards in draft in the conservation strategy. Our intention in the NCDE would be to, when we get close to delisting the NCDE, we would revise the demographic chapter for the NCDE and the habitat standards for the NCDE, go out for public comment on those, finalize that simultaneous with completion of the conservation strategy, and then propose delisting. Does that make sense? Yeah. I guess with, with one suggestion, and that is that that information could be appended to the North Cascades five-year plan. I'm sorry, Northern Continental Divide Project Plan, so that so that it's an understood 
exercise of revising the demographic standards for the for the continental divide as linked to the timing of the listing act. Mm -hmm. Just be more explicit in the process. No, that's a good suggestion. So I, I might add on to what Mary Erickson suggested about, um, I thought she was spot on in her comments about uh, the S committee and, and not really having a clear direction of the role of reporting out the tenure. It, it's felt like, as I, I've been on that committee for five years, that we are a group that works parallel with this group rather than a, a group that works under the umbrella of the budget we see. And so I think that clarity would be great um, and to get that for all the subcommittees. And it's really become apparent because we had something of substance in the, the work through this delisting process, and it becomes very unclear what our goal is. And so it's been a struggle for the past six to 12 months, and kind of moving forward, um, kind of unsure about how that process will unfold, what the steps are for the guest community to take, um, then coming into this body, and what the steps are for this body to take. So I think that clarity would be great part of the plan. Um, having some report out. Um, but I would also caution us that we don't want the set to use to come and provide us with a kind of a task list of accomplishments that this group is still strategic in nature. And so those report outs need to maintain kind of a higher level and not just about a task of accomplishments and so and, and I think that if you if you look at the relationship between the ITBC and the subcommittees, that relationship is unclear, as Ken said there. You know, what it seems to have evolved into is this delegation of authority, in which the ITBC tasks the subcommittees to do the stuff to get the recovery in that ecosystem, but they don't get down into the minutia of what that subcommittee does, nor do they direct the subcommittee. Is that a fair view from the subcommittee chairs? Or do you have other thoughts on that? There's not a lot of hands on if that's what you're saying. There's not a lot of hands on by the executive committee to the subcommittees. As long as we're in line with what the five year plan is for the greater IGBC, um, and our plan is tailored to that, I think that's a liberal system. It doesn't need to be a lot of hands on. So I guess for the executive committee members, is that a satisfactory approach for you? You delegated your authority to these subcommittee chairs and are you satisfied with the way they're doing things or do you want to be more hands-on and involved in the processes at the subcommittee level? And that's really the decision of the executive members. Also, um, my opinion, even though I'm being a little sure of my opinion, um, is that the, the subcommittees should work through the IGBC. It seems like we're the, the level of the governing, the governing body who really should make the ultimate decisions as, what, as to what's occurring. I don't mean the day-to-day -day activities of the subcommittees, but what are they doing? What are their goals? Are they consistent with the higher level grizzly bear companies? And so I do think it's a reporting structure and not just an accomplishment structure, but that there should be some approval process for what the subcommittees are doing by the IGBC executive team. So that's kind of my two cents on it. Um, other folks on the executive committee and share their thoughts? Yeah, yeah I, I'd second that, Tammy. I, I think, and I don't know if it was Joe or Ken who made the point that if, if in fact the subcommittees are truly subcommittees of this executive committee, then that wouldn't make normal sense. Uh, so having some really, uh, my sense is uh, being relatively new to the IGBC and, and following the subcommittee process is that to Joe's point, there hasn't been anything super needy for the subcommittees to deal with, and now the PS committee is probably going to control potential delisting of the subcommittee. Our front of the ecosystem, how does that hold up to the IGBC? And, and uh, we, there's some indication of what the ES does with the conservation strategy, but then what role does the IGBC play? So I, I think clearly there needs to be some more clear.
there no indication of how the two work in tandem? Uh, I mean, it seems like a fairly common sense process and subcommittees work up through a, through a full committee or executive committee across what you call it. So I think it would be fairly easy to delineate, but I think otherwise what I hear from the subcommittee chairs is they're kind of out there operating without a lot of clear guidance in terms of what do they do other than maybe or maybe not provide some report back up to the IGBC. And I, I think, certainly think, from my standpoint, as an executive committee, it would be good for us to be able to engage in some of these more meaty issues and have conversations about them. Not that stuff we talk about isn't important, but we've got some really important issues going on right now, and, and now I've heard that that's what we talk about. But that's a long way to say a second. <laughs> Yeah, and I guess I'll third that um, very similar. The only that little twist I think uh, Chrissy talked about just delegating that authority to the you know, to the uh, subcommittees, and I guess I didn't see it quite that way. As more, I think as Karen described that as an umbrella of the executive committee really setting that overall guidance and, and, and vision and, and working with those subcommittees uh, uh, to get there, but not to get into the weeds. Um, uh, as, as Matt said, I think there are some weeds on this. So to add a little more structure to this discussion, I think it's going to be important for the executive committee to review their five-year tasks in this plan because those are old and dated and they're they need to be updated. So that's going to require the involvement of the subcommittee members. And looking at the subcommittees, excuse me, the, the involvement of the executive committee's uh, members, but with the subcommittees, um, Mary Farnsworth and the, um, the Cabinet Yak subcommittee have recently updated the Cabinet Yak work plan. That's the most recent one that's in there. It was extensively updated at the last committee meeting and the subcommittee meeting. And so maybe as an example, Mary could present what their their updated plan is with the Cabinet Act Selkirk Subcommittee to the IPDC for your review and or approval or editing as need be. And once that process is done, then that would be their five-year plan and they would operate under that. That's an updated one. They just did it a couple months ago. And then the other subcommittees would be tasked with doing the same thing so that the next IPDC meeting, they came in with updated work plans for each of the subcommittees, presented them to the IGBC for approval and edits as necessary, and then they began to operate under those. But Mary could give a good example because she did a very, they did a very extensive review of their five-year plan just a couple months ago. And I think, unless I'm wrong here, I think all the subcommittees were asked to update their five-year plans, and um, but the missing link is it wasn't presented to the executive committee for a concurrence or approval structure. So I think that's the missing link. If you're right, it's kind of good. everybody's updated. I know Karen's updated it. And, um, but it didn't come to this body for the executive committee concurrence or approval. And that's the, the missing part in my thoughts. Well, it's, okay, so I, I'm just confused. So I thought, though, at this meeting, that's what these subcommittees were doing, was going to report out on their plan, and you guys were either getting a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Do I? Am I missing something? No, 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 that's at least from the chair's perspective. Right. That's our understanding of the work as we do all of the IDGs and now so far so can we move on. Right. I'm just trying to stay on this chairs. So here's the patient we present here. Then we go over whatever accomplishments are going for our next work plan. So now it's cool. So, so those subcommittees may be ready today. I don't know. I mean, I guess you guys can speak on that to present it and for it. So, uh, that was not my understanding. My understanding is that the new this is some of the very, uh, it's not really word of mouth, but it's sort of chairmanship. And programming work for the next year. Programming work for the next year. Right. So, I certainly could talk about the topic of the but the kind of sense of it has been, to me, that's why I understood the goal of the chair to talk about accomplishments and impact on the Not to make the action plans, 